From EPAWA Weather Consulting, headquartered in Worth Whitehall, Pennsylvania, this is Weather Weeklies, an informative video of the ins and outs of weather that affect you most in the EPAWA coverage area. The thoughts and opinions expressed in this video are those of the forecaster alone and may not reflect those of the staff of EPAWA Weather Consulting LLC as a whole, nor its constituents. Now, without further ado, here is meteorologist Bobby Martrich with Weather Weeklies. Good Sunday morning to you. Another edition of Weather Weeklies that is now going to be concentrated on a major winter storm coming toward the region. Normally, when we do these videos every single Sunday throughout the winter months, we are talking about the lead pattern for the next five to six weeks. Well, we have something very imminent here that we need to talk about here in this video. Now, this is not going to be done in the same format I normally do. Usually, I have the PowerPoint slides I go through. Uh, this is going to be an impromptu thing right from the model maps and the website and things like that so I can show you what's going on uh, because I think this is important to have a very good breakdown of this storm so you understand all of it uh, from start to finish because there's going to be different parts, different moving parts with this. And I don't want to recap the synoptics so much in this video, but I do want to get into, uh, you know, the timing of things and when you can expect any lulls, when the heaviest is going to be and why. So we'll get into that here in the video. I'm going to start off with the long range, though, just briefly. This is our long range table from Friday, and uh, we're getting into this period now where we have the winter storm affecting our, our region. That's going to come in today and is going to be during the course of today. I'll get into the timing in a second. Uh, but we do have other storm signals listed here beyond this. This is not... Does, when, I, when I list storm signal on here, it does not mean that you're definitely going to get a, a snow or a lot of snow. It could be a, a, you know, a mix event or could be something that, you know, we've identified plenty of signals. Matter of fact, this one here in particular, this one here in particular was identified three weeks ago. Just like the December storm, we were able to, we were able to project what happened at the, uh, with a long range outlook at the end of November, that we'd have something in the middle of December and we did. This is one we projected on January 8th. Friday's long range outlook. So these out, long, long, long range outlooks are able to sniff out uh, some storm signals. Don't They don't always work out. Might not always work out the way you want if you're a snow lover or you're not, uh, you know, but th there are signals here, additional signals going into the month of February. Now this gets cut off here because I'm doing it from the website here, uh, but we have February snowfall is slightly above the above average. This is going to end up being for most areas well above average for the month of February. And speaking of the month of February as a whole and February, March, this is what your average snowfall is uh, for the month of February for all these locations. Well, I can tell you right now, some of these are going to be double just from this storm or pretty close to it. Okay. There's going to be some big snowfalls here. Now, Atlantic City's behind this year, and I don't expect them to get a ton here. Uh, but these areas here, Newark, Harrisburg, Scranton, Allentown, Philly, you're going to get some pretty good snow, and you're probably going to have, it, at a minimum, your average snowfall for the month, the entire month of February. Okay? Uh, March, this is what your averages are here corresponding to those locations. I'm using these locations because there are major climate, uh, climate stations across our region. If you live somewhere close to that, uh, you know, a small town that, uh, like, you know, if, if you, instead of Allentown, you're in Emmaus, okay? Use that, okay? Use the Allentown total. It's pretty close. It's not going to be that far off. So when we have slightly above the above average here, it's more likely going to be well above average uh, by the time, not, not just from the storm, but additional signals that are there down the road. So let's get into the storm now. Now, this is the, I'm using the three kilometer NAM here just to give you a sense of timing. Uh, not saying this is going to be exactly right, but the uh, the output of snowfall, as you guys like, like to look at these snowfall maps, I like to look at soundings. I, they're a lot more representative of what's going to happen and when, uh, but the soundings are matching up to the simulated radar this morning. So I do want to use the NAM three kilometer. Everybody was panicking uh, when the NAM was not on board with this event until just this morning. Last night's run, the I think the prior run, 18Z, the 12Z run yesterday, were not really too thrilled while these other models, the global models, are going nuts. And it caused some pause for saying it was after we released our map. I, I mean, we had thousands of comments on our page yesterday when I put the map up and our, our server crashed. But this is, uh, you know, this was not on board and now it is. Okay, so I'm going to use the three kilometer NAM here. This is a simulated radar reflectivity. Now, if you're living, if you live down in these areas, southwest of this line here, uh, you're going to start probably late morning, mid to late morning. Okay, and this is coming in from this direction out this way. Okay. If you're up in these areas, you can expect a 12 to 3 start in between. That's these areas. Up here, more like mid to late afternoon, 3 to 6. Okay, so that's your timing for the arrival of this snow. And I'm going to move this into motion here. And you're going to get this thump of snow here that's going to go through the evening and, uh, you know, the entire evening. Now, you have a primary low that's out here in the Ohio Valley. 
that's going to be weakening as it runs into a block. You have a secondary that's going to, it's actually well south here, um, offshore. It's actually over the Carolinas, way down south here. But there's, it's transferring its energy from that low in the, in the Ohio Valley, southern Ohio Valley, to the offshore low, which is going to take over as the new coastal low or primary low eventually. Natural physics processes. This is a, many of you have recognized this as a Miller B storm. For those of you who are a little bit more versed in what kind of system this is, uh, natural processes will allow for some dry air to get in between here. This is because you're handing off energy from one to the other. You're going to get a little bit of dry air, a little dry slot in here temporarily until this coastal low takes over. Okay. Until it fully takes over, there's going to be a dry slot. And with that dry slot, there's a little bit of warm air advection aloft. And what that does is it changes, even though it's below freezing and it stays below freezing, you get a little bit of uh, a warm air wedge aloft that's going to change precipitation type from snow over to sleet. It might even have some freezing rain across northern Maryland, uh, but it, it's going to be light because the precipitation overall is going to be light. So this is going to be happening generally around midnight, maybe late evening or midnight. And you see how the precipitation gets a little lighter? Now, it's still snowing up here, but it's still not as intense as it was uh, a few hours before that. But you see where the sleet is across south-central Pennsylvania, maybe parts of southeast PA. And then here is your freezing rain where the, uh, where the pinks are, okay? So this is, uh, and then you have rain down here. So you're going to start off with snow everywhere. It starts off with snow in Delaware, South Jersey. You can see that here. But it is going to go over to rain there for a time. And that's going to go right into Monday morning. Now, as that low gets up right up here, and it's sitting right there, it's going to deepen. And it's tucked in. So instead of everything moving in this direction like it is prior, for the first half of the storm, once this gets up with the low gets here, everything is going to rotate around it uh, on the north and west side in what we call a cold conveyor belt. So this is a very heavy, intense area of of snow that comes off the ocean. You can see it getting really heavy here in northern Jersey, eastern PA. It's going to change all this mixed stuff here Monday morning over to snow again. It's going to change the rain here in South Jersey over to snow. Okay, so you're, you're, you're down here in South Jersey, you're going to be looking at a snow to rain to snow deal. Uh, down in these areas, it's going to be snow for many hours. Okay, and then you're going to get sleep freezing rain and then back to heavy snow on monday during the course of monday morning and see that here but look at this cold conveyor belt it's continuing to push in this is very heavy snow and this is the uh th this kind of snow can give you the one to two inch per hour rates this is going to come in for eastern areas maybe mid to late morning and then pivot and rotate westward across our region and just sit there and park and there's that band and it just shifts west and then finally, once we get into the evening, this starts to shift a little bit further inland. And this is late evening. This is looking at midnight now. And after midnight, you just get some uh, leftover snow showers that go into Tuesday morning. So this is going to continue across these areas, the far eastern areas, with that snow shower activity continuing into the morning on Tuesday. Okay? So this is a very prolonged event. But the meat and potatoes of this storm is really going to come for first with the initial thump of snow, which is quite impressive. And then when we get to... Uh, Monday, mid to late morning on Monday, we see this uh, shift coming out off the ocean the, and the direction of the snow coming this way from the east and east-northeast. And it's going to just pivot around this low as it's parked off to our south and just everything's going to head off in this direction like this. There's where that heavy band is. This is your cold conveyor belt right here in between here and here. And that's just going to pivot around this area of low pressure that's sitting and tucked uh, off the coast here. So that goes through. Uh, generally the evening hours, and then it starts to shift a little bit further west. So you're going to have a heavier, heaviest period there for all intents and purposes. It's going to be mid, mid, mid to late morning Monday through uh, Monday evening. Okay, so that's how the timing of everything works. But just keep in mind that uh, process here. Now, a lot of people, um, w with regard to the icing I'm talking about, so a lot of people like to think that these Miller B storms like to screw us in this area, and sometimes they do. The reason this one is not screwing us, so to speak, putting that in quotes, uh, is because the uh, the low the secondary low pressure is forming far enough south where it, it will have time to just get up to about this latitude right here and that we will benefit in this area for the, from the heavy snow. And that is, uh, in, nor in some other cases, you might have a secondary that forms here initially instead of down by the Carolinas and then heads up and slams New England instead. That happens a lot in these Miller B situations. I've seen a lot of comments about that, that Miller B's, uh, type systems screw this area. This is not going to be a screw job. Again, you're going to be ha you're going to get tremendous amounts of snow out of this, okay? But you are going to have a little warm air wedge come in here and a little bit of a lull that is going to uh, occur 
generally around midnight to about into early Monday morning for these areas only down here. These areas. The rest of you are going to stay snow, and uh, that will go right uh, continuous through this event and then pick up here on Monday. Okay, so I hope that breaks down the timing of it. Uh, now, by this evening, this is looking at uh, 7, 8 o'clock tonight. This is what you'll have on the ground by that point, okay? So I, I give you the time of when it starts. This is where, this is how much you have by 7 a.m., or should be 7 p.m. tonight, and then you get to 7 a, by 7 a.m. tomorrow, you're looking at a general 4 to 6 inches on the ground over here, and you're in the 4 to 8 range, eight, 4 to 8 inch range out here, okay? Probably getting closer to 7, 8, 8 inches at that point. Now, by the end of the storm, look what this does, Okay. And this brings you all this. I actually, can move this a little bit further. Yeah, there we go. So this is this encompasses the entire storm. This is the European model, and I'll show you several. Uh, but this is what the total snow, storm snowfall is. So we might have to increase in these areas right here, and we're thinking about doing that. Uh, but we have that uh, on our map that we have yesterday. We had a a, a twelve to eight, very large twelve to eighteen plus area, and circled a red area here that was uh, a best chance to see greater than eighteen. Okay, well that's happening here on this particular model. Uh, the NAM doing the same thing, focusing on these areas right here, the areas we had circled. GFS, again, same thing, focusing on these same areas for going over 18. So this could be like maybe an 18 to 24 deal. We haven't made that determination yet, but I'll show you the map in a second. Uh, actually, here, let me get to that now. This is our this is our snow map that we have from last night. So if I'm going to say uh, there's going to be any changes, see this red circle area? This is still good. I might actually increase this a little bit or push this a little bit further northwest so that the red area would now extend maybe up to here. Okay? Kind of like that. And not much change, really. Okay? So that area, and maybe not as quite, quite as extensive further south, maybe something like this. So if I drew a, the line here. It's probably like that now. That's probably about where I would shift that red. I said that red area could shift. Uh, that is where the, and that's going to depend on that cold conveyor belt. That's a, generally where it looks like it's going to be right now. Also, uh, this area up here in blue that we have in an 8 to 12 area is now going to be expanded. We're going to have this a 12 to 18 range. That's going to include you guys in Wilkesbury, Scranton, uh, back here in uh, uh, parts of Cumberland, uh, Montour, northern Northumberland. Uh, Union County, State College, you guys are all in the 12 to 18 now, okay? So this purple area, which represents 12 to 18, that's going to include you now. This blue area is going to be moving up to here, almost to Tawanda, not quite, maybe up to here, okay? So you draw that outline right here. We're just going to shift everything to the northwest. This area down here is not going to change. So we're not shifting, we're expanding the purple zone over to include the, the uh, B zone, and the B zone is not going to be part of A up here, okay? Just so you understand how that's going to work. And uh, we're going to have that new map out. We're going to make the. We're going to look at some some other data this morning and see if we have to. I don't see any, any other adjustments uh, across the board. Everything else here is pretty good. I will say the areas down south here. This is an eight to twelve plus here. That includes Philadelphia, Northern Maryland, and again, you're going to go over to other precipitation types in this re, in this region. And I highlighted that on that NAM and show you that sleep mixing in. Uh, and especially over to from Philadelphia over to uh, you know the Tom's River area here. Now this is this area is going to be a before and after. Okay, you're going to get that really strong thump of snow on the front, and then you're going to have a change over to sleep freezing rain, go back over to snow on during the course of the morning on Monday. Okay, so this is going to be a before and after. These areas here are going to get all their snow, uh, most of your snow uh, early on. Most of it. So uh, and then these areas down here in E and F, these are four to eight. And uh, two to four. Again, you're going over rain down here in these areas, but you're going to go back over to snow here on uh, Monday, Monday night, and even Tuesday. So you're going to have uh, your accumulations. Are, this is this is through the entire storm. This is storm total snowfall. Okay, so this encompasses the entire storm. These areas that don't mix up here, you're going to get you're going to get plowed. Okay, so this is going to be a big storm. This is not something that is going to shift. This is not something that oh wow now this this shifted this model shifted. This is going to hit. Okay. And those are the changes we're thinking about doing here at the moment. One last thing to address is going to be the wind. Uh, the wind is going to be uh, okay today. I think once we get into the overnight, especially after midnight, late in the overnight, 12 to 3 a.m. type thing, when this low starts pushing northward, you're going to get some wind gusts that are going to pick up uh, generally 15 to 25 or 20 to 30. Okay, and some these are noting peak gusts here. Uh, peak gusts are going to be in the 30 to 40 ranges, might be a little bit high here. Uh, but this is going to just be sitting here over eastern areas, especially across New Jersey, uh, where you're closest to that low. There could be some 
I don't want to say they're, 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 that this is going to uh, imply that blizzard warnings are going to happen or be put up here by the National Weather Service, but there could be blizzard conditions at times. Okay, the, the definition of a blizzard is to have three or more hours consecutively of 35 degree or 35 miles per hour sustained winds or greater, not gusts. This map represents uh, gusts here. Uh, sustained gusts or sustained wind speeds at this time are not nearly as high. So I don't think we're going to have that, but I think you could get certainly some gusts that could provide some uh, some winter uh, some 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 conditions that are going to give you uh, blizzard conditions at times with that heavy snow coming in, and that's going to go all the way through Monday evening. Okay, and then after that we stay breezy here on Tuesday. And Tuesday night with pretty much the entire area with some gusts that are going to be uh, generally in the 30 to 35 range. So that's pretty much it for this entire storm. I hope that helps you to uh, understand how this is going to evolve. Uh, and uh, again, look for our map changes. Those changes I said we we're going to make to the map are probably going to be around 11 o'clock or so, uh, maybe a little bit after that. I'll, I don't want to commit to an exact time here. I, want, I know we're going to get the uh, map changed a little bit. We're going to send the alerts out to our subscribers first. Uh, and then we're going to go from there. But I think those are the changes we're going to be making. I have to discuss that with my team yet and make sure they're on board. I know at least one of them are on board. I talked to about that this morning, but we'll, we'll see uh, how the rest of the team feels about that. And uh, But we'll expect that new map update to come uh, late this morning. Okay, so that will be before the snow starts uh, for most of you. So uh, we'll, we'll get that out as soon as we can. We're just kind of moving a mile a minute this morning. I just want to get this out to everyone to the public and still have the Weather Weekly's video this week so we're not skipping it just because we have a storm i just want to incorporate the storm so you understand how everything is going on so that's this edition of weather weeklies for sunday J uh, january 31st join us again next week we'll take a look at any additional signals that might be popping up after that point you might be sick of snow after the after this one but uh there are some additional signals in the pipeline that could or could not produce we'll see how that works out uh, but please, the, the, all these people that have been, been bugging us about, you know, the snow, the, the winter sucks, and we're, not, we're having a, one of those winters again. It's a one-trick pony. Relax. A winter is several months long, and we told you this storm, this winter had that kind of potential, and we've been talking about these signals every single week. This should not be a surprise to any of you, okay? It should not be a surprise. So just relax with the winter's over stuff. I mean, come on. You're gonna you, some of these areas are, you, after this storm, you're gonna have above a normal winter for a season total. Okay, some pretty good snowfall coming. All right, so just relax. Okay, we have uh, others in the pipeline too, and that might go uh, straight through uh, through early March. So buckle up. We got a long ride to go. I'm EPAWA meteorologist Bobby Marches. That's this edition of Weather Weeklies for Sunday, January 31st. I'll see you again next week. Stay safe and take care.